creatures and welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Cherry and if you are new here, welcome to the channel and for those returning subscribers, what's up guys? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. As you can see, I am holding a Harry Potter wand. Yes, this is a Harry Potter video as you could probably tell from the title down below. So I am collaborating with Katie from Over the Mooney. We have a series going on right now called Crafted. And what this series involves is we send craft supplies back and forth to each other and then we challenge each other to make something from those craft supplies. Well, this video is structured a little bit differently. And if you wanna see my other Crafted videos, I'm gonna link them up above in the corner and also down below in the subscription. But today we decided we were talking back and forth and we were saying we really wish that we could do something involving Harry Potter and today is that day. So we have decided to create four school supplies or four things that are required to go back to Hogwarts since Hogwarts started on September 1st. So with the new school year in mind, we decided to go ahead and craft the things that you need to be a Hogwarts student. So one of those, of course, is a wand. Now this is from Universal, so this is not the wand that I crafted, but I will be showing you that wand very, very soon. And then a pet or an animal that you get to bring along with you, so that could be either a cat, a toad, a rat, or an owl and then a wearable item from your Hogwarts house. So for those of you that don't know, I am a Gryffindor, so I did make something for Gryffindor. And then finally, we have something from our favorite subject at Hogwarts. So let's go ahead and get started on this magical journey. Akio Crafts. Today, we have to make the most important school supply for Hogwarts, and that is a wand. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so this is a really long, like skinny dowel rod. I just had it in my craft room, and I am going to try to get it similar or close to what my Pottermore account has say. So here I am. So I've been sorted into Gryffindor. My Patronus is a fox. Oh, here it is. Okay, Hawthorne wood. So obviously, this is Hawthorne. Phoenix feather core. Ooh, okay, so we're gonna need to include maybe a Phoenix feather in here or something. 13 and three quarters inches. Oh, she is long. Oh, okay. Surprisingly squishy and flexible. Uh, me though. It's a her horrendous looking wand. I'm gonna make mine look way cuter than that because the one that chose me is much cuter than that. So we're going to try again. Um, this length though, like that is long, don't you think? Okay, we got to look up like who, who has the longest wand in Harry Potter. Oh, that's something that you can search. The longest wand is 18 inches. <laughs> Voldemort took it from its last owner, Lucius Malfoy. Oh. Oh, it's always the people you least expect, huh? That big boy wand. Okay, I got a random idea. So I was just Googling online, like, what Harry Potter wands, like, how to make them, just to see kind of what other people have done. And I saw this wand that, like, I really want to make. So I saw they added, like, a jewel or, like, a long jewel off of the end of the wand. And I found this in my rhinestone bag. And I thought, how cool would that be to be like off of the back to where it's like here, right? And so, ooh, okay, yeah. I like how this is looking. Like this at the very end, I think is super pretty. Like the light, the lighting is really bad in here, so it's kind of hard to see, but I do think it's looking nice. So I'm just gonna start and kind of see how it goes. Able to wrap this part and I like it, but the jewel seems a little bit unstable. So I'm gonna wrap probably 
one or two more here. And I like to just continually burn my fingers. Ugh. Oh, it's so hot. Okay. When you don't have an extra hand, you just use your teeth on your hot glue gun. Pro tip. <laughs> I do not recommend that. Do not put your teeth on your hot glue gun. That was a terrible idea. Um, sometimes out of desperation, you gotta do, you gotta do things. You gotta make things happen. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Living. <gasps> Excuse me? Okay, so now I'm gonna have to go see if I can find any um, masking tape because I do want to cover this because I do not want this portion of my wand painted because I want her to be amethyst, beautiful, and out in the open. And Telly Belly also wants that, right, Tells? Yeah, baby. Yeah, she agrees. Okay, so I did not end up having any masking tape, but I have washi tape and that's literally the same thing. We're just gonna take, and yes, this is Mickey Mouse washi tape. <laughs> I have to stay on brand, but unfortunately this is the wrong franchise and I apologize uh, to anyone out there who is a Harry Potter fan and not a Disney fan, so. <laughs> We have to work with what we have. I can't go out and buy masking tape right now. I'm gonna show you what my wand looks like up close after it's been finished. Here is my beautiful wand that I created. And yes, it is sparkly. And yes, it is black. <laughs> Kind of like my soul. Um, so I decided to add that purple jewel onto the end, which I thought turned out really nicely. Then I used the cord and glued it down and then glued a pattern of the cord on top of that. We did the spray paint. This is a 13 inches and three quarters, which is the correct wand length from my Pottermore account. And I think it's got a really nice feel to it. It is smaller than um, I'm used to because I'm used to a very large wand like the wand that I have from Universal. Not saying that's bad at all. I'm definitely not on Lucius Malfoy's level. <laughs> but anyway, here is my wand. It definitely chose me. It's so sparkly and glittery. And that is exactly what I wanted in a wand. We are now moving on to the next craft and we are to make something from our most favorite subject from Hogwarts. And for me, it was kind of a tie between magical creatures and potions. And I decided to go with potions because I kind of have an obsession with jars and putting things into jars. And I thought that this was definitely a jar-like <laughs> craft. And so uh, potions has been taught by Professor Snape and Slughorn and, and two others. I can't remember their names off the top of my head. But anyway, what I wanted to create today was the draft of peace. It relieves anxiety. The side effects, Overdo the, overdoing the ingredients may result in a long or irreversible sleep. So we have to be very careful when we mix this together. The characteristics of it is it emits a light silver vapor. And the brewing time takes about 90 minutes. I'm obviously going to speed up the video, so it won't take 90 minutes, but we need ingredients. So I have the syrup of hellebore, which is also known as clear Elmer's glue. So I have the main ingredient, but we need four other ingredients. We need powdered moonstone, powdered unicorn horn, powdered porcupine quills, and valerian root. So we're going to go and try to see if we can find those things. Now, I have a handy dandy box of glitter. I'm going to scoot you guys down so you can see. Um, so here is my box of glitter. This is the bottle that I found at Michael's and it was only like $2 and it comes with a cork. I have all of my ingredients here. So I have the Hellbore syrup. I have the porcupine quills, which actually are tiny itty bitty little stars. 
I have the unicorn horn that is actually tiny little silver balls. And then I have the crushed moonstone, which is this beautiful white iridescent glitter. And then I took a little piece of root, valerian root, from the valerian root that I happen to have in my fake flower stash. We've made our draft of peace. I think it's so pretty. I love that you can see the root inside of it. I think it's so neat. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to leave this. It says that it takes 90 minutes, but I want this to settle very well and I don't want us to go into an irreversible sleep. So we're gonna leave this overnight to get all the little air bubbles out. For class, I did choose potions and I decided to make the draft of peace and I really love how it turned out. I thought it was really pretty and really simple and so here is what the draft of peace that we made ended up looking like. Here's how my draft of peace turned out. I wasn't super jazzed about the label. I had some difficulty with the label. I Next time I will buy sticky paper that's like an actual sticker so it can stick on a bit easier and plus this bottle is extremely bulbous that's probably not a word but anyway i like the little adornments i had some little glass beads that i added and then as you saw in the video all of the ingredients are in there including that valerian root it's kind of like floating at the top which i thought was really fun really enjoyed making this potions bottle i'm sure it's going to be one of many Next, we're gonna move on to a wearable. And my decision for the wearable was that I really wanted to make something that was different than like a scarf, because I feel like uh, when we think of Harry Potter, there's lots of scarves, which there's nothing wrong with that. I love Harry Potter scarves and cloaks. But I thought I'd do a little bit of a spin on it. So since I'm part of the Quidditch team, I thought that I would make a little warm up outfit or something that I might wear like going out to the field. And I'm going to be making this pattern here. I got this pattern at Joann's Fabrics and it's a very easy Vogue pattern and it's supposed to be like a tunic top that's hooded and I got this beautiful fabric from Joann that is Gryffindor colors and it is red with like sparkly gold in there and it's like a really soft nice like it seems like it's an easy to work with material and I have since my position in Quidditch is a seeker I purchased this awesome seeker patch that I got off of Etsy it arrived really really quickly it was very inexpensive and so I'm going to be placing that like on the chest portion and so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get started on kind of cutting out the pattern and going in that direction because we have got a lot of sewing ahead of us. There's a little change of plans. This pattern is way too big for my craft table, so I'm going to have to move locations. I think I'm going to have to go into the living room and try to lay it on the floor and cut it there. And I think I think I'm going to choose the extra large size just to make sure it's a little bit oversized. I typically wear a large, but I think that I want to put, I want to do an XL because it's easier to like take in than it would be to take out. So I think that that's what I'm going to choose. Fingers crossed that it works. Good morning. It is the next day. So I took this pattern out to the living room. <laughs> And my cat Telly like feels like if I'm doing something that doesn't involve her, like she needs to be in the middle of it. So like right when I set it down, she's like, like stamping all over it. And I was like, oh, please stop. Because this is like the thinnest paper ever. So I decided <laughs> to just come back in my craft room and like just struggle through it because my craft room, well, you guys don't know. Well, maybe you can tell, like I could probably reach both sides of this room. Well, almost like I have maybe a foot 
um, in like wingspan. So this room is really, really tiny. And so <laughs> I just don't have a very big table. So it like can't even accommodate like how big this pattern is which is fine. I just didn't want Telly to like poke a bunch of like little jelly bean toe holes into the pattern without it being done. Oh, I made a huge mistake. I have to go to Joanne's. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. So what I did was when it says cut two, it means that it's folded, right? So you'll get two opposite sides when you take it out. I totally cut them out individually and forgot to flip the pattern. So now I have two left sides of my shirt. Oh. All right, we are here at the Ghetto Joann's. <laughs> the Ghetto Joann's is the best Joann's in Anchorage. So I took a wrong turn. It was scary. I have my swatch of fabric. Oh, it's here. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Whew. Okay, so we have two yards, single yards. One was actually a remnant, which they give you a good deal on. And then I got 50% off one regular price item. So I think we're going to come out pretty good on Okay, so the tunic is done. So now I just have to place the patch on there. And I think I know where I want to place it. So that's the next thing that we're gonna do. Let me show you. So I kind of determined where I thought it should go. I tried this on earlier. It is massive, like massively huge, which is fine, no big deal. Um, athletic stuff is kind of comfy when it is big, bigger so I'm totally fine with that and then I have this frog clasp but this is the thing that's going to hold this together because this is a um, it's an open v-neck so it's designed to be a v-neck so I want to place it kind of near the top or the wearable I wanted it to be Quidditch themed because I would play Quidditch and so I went with a kind of a like warm-up hoodie it's got like a really big hood um but basically i'm gonna take you guys outside and show you exactly what it looks like so let's roll the day is the animal for this project and actually it took me a really long time to decide what I wanted to do because my all-time favorite animal is a cat. I've always had a little bit of an obsession with frogs so I'm like well maybe we should make a frog for this project so I started thinking about it and I thought it would be really cute to do like a stuffed animal type of frog and I decided that I was gonna kind of search the web and see what they had because I wanted something really simple that didn't take a really long time to make because we are doing four projects in one video, which is kind of a lot of projects. And I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I started searching and on Etsy, I found this vintage pattern and it is the floppy frog pattern and I thought it was super cute and he's made of like leather material and he is full of beans like full of beanie baby beads <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're called but that's what I call them beanie baby beads and so that is what we're making today so I wanted to use some of the fabrics that I already have because I have a plethora of different amazing fabrics in my craft room and so I decided on two fabrics that I've never used before this fabric I wanted to make some live action Elliot ears out of 
from Pete's Dragon because I thought that this screamed um, Elliot from Pete's Dragon, uh, the live action. But I had some extra of it and I thought that this would be kind of cool. I know that frogs don't have scales. I know that. But like, maybe he's a dragon frog <laughs> because he's from Harry Potter. <laughs> and then this is the next fabric I got from a senior center like they were having a big sale at a senior center and so this is his belly and it is so pretty it's like a suede fabric it's super duper thick like super thick so i'm gonna make his little tummy so you can see i've traced around his little tummy and that is what his tummy is going to be and then i brought down these three jars so these three jars i wanted to show you so my grandmother passed away when i was 13 years old and these are all of the buttons from her sewing room. And I actually have a third jar. And so I spent some time today sifting through and finding some buttons that I thought were really pretty and really unique that could be used as his little eyes. And I ended up deciding on two buttons. So we have a, like a maroon button and a teal button and what these will do is I'm gonna set them one on top of the other I'm sorry they're really small so it's a little bit hard to see so then they will be on his little eye so that'll be his little like the blue will be his little pupil but the coloring of this fabric with these buttons I thought was really really pretty although not realistic but honestly guys like I'm not trying to go for realistic right now I'm going for like what I like. So these are the buttons. We're going to get started and go ahead and get him all cut out. And then I have to sew on his eyes. Then we're going to start sewing him. And I'm so excited because it's been years since I have used these little poly beads. These are the beanie baby beads that I was telling you about earlier. So you can get this. I got this at Walmart and this has like a cap that you can open up. It's like such a fun way to fill your projects because it gives them weight and it also allows them to be like set to set up or to like be posed in different ways in comparison to like polyfill we are going to use a little bit of polyfill though i will say um so yeah let me show you so this is what it looks like it's got like a little kind of like a milk jug and then we're just going to pour it full and i probably will use a funnel as well like a large mouth funnel because we do want to leave a little bit um, open for him. But yeah, we're going to do it. I'm so excited. Okay, let's make a frog. So as we're cutting, we, we need to come up with a name. Um, I feel like because of his coloring, like he should be called like something with pickles <laughs> like professor pickles maybe we're just okay we're just gonna call him professor pickles okay so it is the next day sorry i have no makeup on i'm in my pajamas um but i wanted to show you so Professor Pickle's eyes are all good. The glue dried nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to sew him together and then we are going to fill him with beads. So I've got to do some pinning and then I've got to do some sewing. So that's what we're going to do now. we're going to talk about probably my most favorite thing I've made in quite a while and that is my pet or my animal to go along with me to Hogwarts and I decided to make Professor Pickles so without further ado I'm going to show you my sweet boy here we go here is an up close and personal version of Professor Pickles his underbelly is definitely Kermit the Frog-esque it is very much his style. I like to squish him up a bit and make him sit like a proper gentleman. And I 
want you guys to know he is a rare dragon toad, hence the furry scales. His little eyeballs have a little Mother of Pearl-esque design on them, and I just really love how he turned out. He is a beanie baby. Love, love, love the feeling of a beanie baby, how like thick and heavy he is. But if you guys know me well, you know that I can't have animals without accessories. So I've got to get his accessory on. I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. So since I am on the Gryffindor Quidditch team, I made Professor Pickles a Gryffindor Quidditch jersey for him to wear during the games because he will obviously be going with me on the games at the games. I made it a little bit thick because his little body's a little wide, he's a little thick chunky boy. He's got a nice little booty. He fills out this cute little jersey pretty nicely and I think it'll be really comfortable for him to wear um, in the commons room and with me while he is in the Gryffindor house. Be sure to go check out Katie from Over the Moonies video today. We are releasing at the same time, so I'm going to link her up in the corner up here and also down below for you to check out her video of her crafted going to Hogwarts school supplies video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know down below which of the four items that I created was your favorite and why, and then what are your preferences? Like if you were to do this, what would you have made? It was so fun hanging out with you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like silly and fun Disney unboxings, traveling with me across the country and across the globe and to all the Disney parks and anything creative, crafty, or Disney, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click that little notification bell to be notified of when I upload videos. I post every Monday and every Thursday. It was so fun hanging out with you guys and I will see you next time. Akio outro. Telly, what Hogwarts house are you in? <laughs>